So, but now let's get started. The first talk is always the same stuff. Now it will be brilliant because the same stuff is a keynote, but the content is always different. This has been made uh, yesterday on the rooftop of our office, and this is a drone photo from the core team from the core sprint. So let's get started. Please welcome on stage Tobias Gruber and Robert Lemke. Oh yeah, so nice to be here and to see all of you. Uh, I have the same photo by coincidence. Um, actually, really co coincidence. <laughs> um, anyway, so I, I'd like to welcome you uh, from uh, as part of the NEOS team. Um, so this is what I'm going to do uh, in the next couple of minutes. Uh, tell you a bit about uh, what happened behind the scenes. Um, probably you heard some parts of it when you followed our project. Um, and of course, I also want to give you a little bit of an outlook uh, about what topics we are currently uh, are busy with, what we think about, what challenges we are facing. Um, yeah, but for me, it's really amazing all the time. It's, it's always like a little family meeting. Um, I know so many of you guys. Um, also because many of you are customers of us, but um <laughs> but um that that's pretty amazing. And yeah, I, I think we'll have a really nice time uh, the next two days here. So as first, um like as usual, let's take a little book uh look back at what happened since the last conference. Um our last conference was in Hamburg, as you know. Who was there by the way? Okay, so that also means we have some new people here <laughs> uh, who haven't been here in Hamburg at the NEOS conference. Um, and what was so so special for us back then was that it was the first uh, NEOS branded conference. So uh, it's it's a bit funny to, to look back and think about um, when NEOS became NEOS and we st started the brand and everything. That's not so long ago. And on the other hand, that's there's so much which happens. So uh, many of us can't even imagine that it was different at some, toi uh, at some time. So I think, um, yeah, we achieved a lot. We have some awesome view here. Sometimes we need to uh, shut down the windows a bit uh, so you concentrate on the talks. It doesn't have to do with the light, actually. It's just to keep you focused, yeah? Um, and um, as Sven already said, uh, this time we'll start with a two-track conference. So uh, the idea behind that is, of course, that we want to broaden um, our audience and, and the people who might uh, want to go to the NEOS conference. And that is also the case for any other event we do. So even though um, some sometimes uh, someone might say we are having a code sprint, that is not actually the case. We are having um, a NEOS sprint where we uh, meet together and work on anything NEOS. Could be marketing, could be code. So definitely anyone is invited, not only coders. And that's also why we don't have like a business conference or a developer conference because um, I don't know about you, like let's let's see, um, who's basically considering him or herself a kind of manager or leading a company or team or, or so? Can you raise your hand? Yeah. And who of that has some kind of development background? Same people, see? <laughs> And it was even more. No, <laughs> that doesn't work. So I think it doesn't make sense to to have that completely separated because there are definitely developers who are interested in so-called business topics, right? And um, because that is for sure, um, the the people usually we we meet at Neos uh, events are and and also um, when we develop Neos are really interested in in lots of things, not only development. This was 13 years ago. Um, <laughs> I won't do the whole history <laughs> roll up, right? But I just stumbled over this photo. It was 13 years ago um, when 
kind of the idea came up okay let's let's do something which eventually became neos um unfortunately not all of these people are s still part of the project uh, it's basically carsten who's at the upper left do you recognize him yeah and you know why he's still here because he took notes uh, the others <laughs> yeah <laughs> right Casper <laughs> already looked a bit tired there <laughs> Anyway, so that that is long ago, but um, it's four and a half years ago that we released um, Neos 1.0 in Nuremberg. It was very cold back then in, in that garage, but um, it was really nice. And I remember how everyone was sitting there at the sprint uh, before that and working towards the 1.0 one release. That's that was pretty crazy. Anyway, long time ago, um, nowadays, we have a community which which is growing and which is very friendly and if you think about how can i get involved more in the project um, meetups are a good idea to attend so there are meetups in, in lots of cities by now and uh, you can also start your own meetup if you if you're doing neos if you have some some background then just get in touch with someone who already does a meetup and can share some experience with you so it's definitely a good start. We also do these sprints, and by the way, maybe someone has a better idea for, for naming them, not calling them a sprint, because that sounds so exhaustive. I mean, they are, but the idea is not to, <laughs> to run, run, run. And so if you have an idea, um, just let us know. And we have, um, basically, I think we had four bigger sprints last year, and we also dedicate some, some of them to specific topics. Um, but we were in Dresden, in Kiel, in Vienna, and in Hamburg. And that is usually a combination of trying to get things done, like uh, wrapping things up before release or concentrating on some bigger thing, uh, but also um, at looking at the health status of, of our team, of our project, and uh, we usually do a one-day retrospective during these um, um, weeks. And as usual, I mean, if you know a retrospective, it's like, yeah, really, should we invest a whole day in just talking? I really want to get that code finished. Um, but afterwards, um, it's, it's really, we see that how, how much worth it is. So technical timeline for such a retro is uh, that we pick some specific topics and then we have certain formats and one is called a fishbowl which is a very effective way of discussing things. Um, and then we try to distill the next topics for the future we want to tackle. Um, and that could be uh, about the product, but it could also be about uh, the team spirit, the culture, and so on. And what we also do there is uh, looking back what happened since the last retro. And, and that is why we keep on doing that, because it, it tells you that even even though you don't think so, a lot of things happened and a lot of things could be moved. So since the last conference, for example, we started finally started uh, the NEOS Foundation. So we incorporated the NEOS Foundation. <laughs> yeah, you, you were happy about that. That's great. We are also very happy about it, but um, I have to say uh, we were not able to put a lot of work into it um, because there were so many other things which were way more important than uh, tackling that company. But Tobias will tell you a bit more about what is now planned to, to get things up to speed. And also we had 69 NEOS releases and 78 Flow releases. <laughs> right? So what does that tell? I mean, there were not each of them were, were a major release, <laughs> um, but it tells something about how we push out um, bug fixes and and how we care about older versions because that also means that we still maintain uh, older branches and make really sure that if we discover bugs, they are fixed in all all the relevant branches. We also updated the release scheme so. Um, you see that just from the graphical view here, um, uh, all the three, 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 uh, three releases stop at a certain time. That means we kind of extended 
uh, the lifetime of the non-LTS releases. That has some organization and and um, organizational and um, other meaningful re uh, reasons. <laughs> Just made sense. Anyway, we also had the release of the NEOS UI shortly before Christmas, um, the ReactJS UI. And do you remember last conference where we announced that we will develop a new UI? So it's not really a lot of time which passed since then, right? And we created a whole new user interface. Uh, I was not involved. <laughs> <laughs> this is just my JavaScript skills, right? Um, but I think that's pretty amazing because that is such a huge effort and it looks this is almost the same like before. You try to sell that a customer. Um, but <laughs> but um, we know that this is a very important foundation for future things we are going to do and that is why we also um, invest um, our spare time and customers' um, donations and so on uh, into these kinds of topics. So another topic which was really important for us for many years already um, is a more capable content repository. So if you know the history of our content repository that started back then with the Java standard which we st started to implement and then we left that standard because um, we wanted to have some features which were not possible in that, which is content dimensions. Um, and then also we wanted to have our workspaces approach and so on, so we created our own content repository with a traditional, or I, I would say state-of-the-art um, development techniques which we knew by then, or back then, which were kind of um, used back then. But since everything evolves, um, there are better ways to do that now. So we started looking um, into event sourcing and also had meetings about domain-driven design specifically for the content repository. On and what came out of it was, um, for example, uh, a package um, for Flow which allows you to use event sourcing um, in an easy way, uh, which was uh, mostly developed by, by Basti and, and me. And we start using that in some testing then in some real world projects. And then we had a sprint in, in Kiel where we uh, laid the foundation for the event sourced content repository. And what, why that makes sense and what, what's so special about that, uh, there will be a whole talk about it uh, tomorrow. Yeah, and I think a big change also during the last year was that it became more and more apparent that Atomic Fusion is a really nice approach to develop NEOS websites, right? So can you stand up? Because uh, the creators of Atomic Fusion are here, of course. <laughs> so it's, um, it's really incredible what, what you achieved and um, even though we were discussing uh, topics like atomic design and so on for some years already, I found uh, recently s uh, found some post in in the NEOS related uh, channel uh, from six years ago. We were discussing topics like that, but that's all nice if you talk about it. But if you actually do it, that's a whole different thing, and it makes NEOS so much more powerful. And so that was also the reason why uh, the packages you originally developed were transferred to the NEOS namespace and now um, have become a very important part of NEOS. Right, so that's kind of <laughs> a little uh, overview of what happened uh, during the last years. And what I like about the community and also what I like about this conference is that we don't try to be the polished, um, flawless uh, company or project who, you know, where everything is just great and everything is just uh, super cool because we are an open source project which, of course, lives from participation. So you also need to know about what things go wrong and what we are caring about, what, what the challenges are. 
So uh, I think that's that's a very important value of the NEOS community that we are open about these things too. And so this is now the part about the challenges we are currently facing or things we are discussing and, and want to tackle. One is, um, yeah, it's a harsh word, but code rot and maintenance. So when you have a project which grows over the year, then there will be code which is old. And uh, you will find in, in the flow framework, you will find code which is pretty old. That doesn't make it bad per se. Actually, there is some very old code which works really nicely and, and you don't even uh, realize that it's there. But the more people we have contributing, and that happened a lot during the last year, that, that more people started contributing and more inexperienced people start contributing, the more inconsistent uh, it gets. So that is something we need to address and look at. So we need to take um, make people aware of quality in certain ways. And also, um, we have very few people for very unpopular tasks. So, for example, if, if there's a really weird problem which cannot be reproduced with a content repository when, let's say, a couple of editors are moving pages in different workspaces and then try to publish that at the same time or some, uh, then and something goes wrong there, there's hardly anyone who, who would take that week of looking into that bug, <laughs> especially if you cannot reproduce it. Um, and that is something we also need to tackle. We don't know exactly how to do that yet. Um, maybe we can use some funds of the NEOS Foundation to, to pay someone to uh, get more time for it, but that's an important uh, thing to do. Also, of course, when we do big changes, and we aim to do lots of big changes in the future as well, like new uh, user interface, new content repository, things like that, um, there's a lot of risk involved if you don't do it right, because also you need to maintain two things at the same time and fade out the other, and it should be compatible and so on. But I think we're pretty good at that, but it um, consumes a lot of time and energy to do that, to get that right. Right, and diversity is also one of the topics we always have at every sprint um, where we have specific discussions about. We would like to have a more diver diverse NEOS team um, and can, can s anyone, no, everyone from the NEOS team who is here today stand up? Okay, so if you have people in your company who don't look like any of these, <laughs> then send them, please. <laughs> they are great people, but they, they have some things in common. Look at them. <laughs> right? Okay, you can sit down again. <laughs> Thanks. Um, <laughs> so, and that is quite tricky because I, I think we are a very open project and a very open team who addresses these things but on the other hand uh, when you look at web agencies and other companies they have kind of the same problem um, there are very very few girls for example developing and if you have any of these um, like where you fit I think that could fit just um, just um, motivate them to to come to a NEOS um, event, send them. Uh, they might not have the idea uh, in the first place. Okay, so and I have one f uh, further challenge which I want to address specifically. So uh, one question which comes up every now and then is, uh, why do you actually still use Flow and why don't you use Symfony? Right? And I think that's a very good question um, because what happens is, of course, that the whole PHP community evolves and also not beyond that, of course. And uh, I mean, we are not blind and don't see that and we're not participating. We do participate in that. We see that there are components and, and PSR standards and so on. But the, 
the challenge is how to address that in an existing large code base which is open source where people rely on and and have applications running and companies depending on so our take on going into the direction of being more component based and and kind of adjusting to what happens is that first of all um, consistency and intuitive use are still overrule everything so that because that is something when you use flow for example you know that if you know one part and it's done in a certain way and variables are named in a certain way then you find it some other place as well so that is was a very important thing in flow um, and that's actually where the name comes from that you have a possibility to get into that flow feeling um, to understand code you have not seen before and that also is should be true for applications which use flow right you because we have certain conventions um, then you recognize things again however if you want to have everything keep keep everything consistent then you cannot do any changes to the to the underlying principles right if you say let's use other naming schemes for interfaces how can you keep that consistent um, but however we, we do that so what we do is first of all we try to rec refactor into smaller chunks and smaller components um, while we are touching certain code and what we do uh, why we do that is mostly for kind of encapsulating parts of NEAS which we potentially could remove by an existing component and we have to choose that component from someone else very carefully because um, just replacing something by something else uh, doesn't make us happy I mean if it's bad maintained and doesn't have a future and we have n zero influence on it then it's also difficult right so that is one reason uh, we want for example nobody of us is really keen on writing code for logging or caching or HTTP we all did that so we ticked it off we did once in a lifetime uh, develop an HTTP component now that's off our list we can replace that but our goal is not to actually just refactor something into a component so that for example our logging could be used in any kind of PHP project without flow and nails um, I think we we really think that this is a very good thing to do and we looked into that lots of times and try to be good citizens and in the ecosystem but it's just not what we have the resources for and what what also what the mission of the NEOS project is we in the first place we try to create a content management system so what does that mean in terms of uh, should we use symphony or not so if we could just you know have a magic wand you you have you programmed a magic wand that's pretty cool maybe we can use that um, and switch to symphony sure why not a symphony 4 is pretty cool um, but that's not reality for us so what we do is we try to uh, go into that direction and maybe at some point we find the open opportunity to use uh, to use symphony bundles side by side um, with other uh, plugins in flow and NEOS but that's not our focus our focus should be where can we provide the best value for the users of NEOS um, and we try to look uh, left and right and improve things um, but it's not that we can afford to make everything completely incompatible overnight okay enough problems for today so um, the hot topics we are currently thinking about and addressing uh, I mentioned a few of them already so one of them definitely is uh, event sourcing and the event source content repository of course um, event sourcing also completely independently from from NEOS so there have been some some nice examples of uh, how event sourcing can be used um, and um, provide some really big uh, value um, for example for th for the actual business of a company where you can analyze things you couldn't analyze before and, and things like that so that's 
really one of our topics. Atomic fusion, obviously, that, uh, that goes further and further. We'll we look into how we can uh, make that part of our best practice. We also, also communicate. Um, asset management, I'll also talk about that tomorrow, um, where we go, in which direction we might go there. Um, there have been some some further development into direction to making uh, Flow and Neos more cloud compatible, and the nice thing is really, um, especially during the last year, we could uh, discover. So, for example, by by Beach, the cloud hosting platform we run, um, how Neos really behaves in a scalable cloud platform, and it, it's just perfect. We don't even need a um, a persistent file system and things like that and that is what we hoped for that it would work out in the end and and it also works very nice in practice um, the react UI we have that done for the most part of the content module there are a few things further to develop but of course we also want to tackle other parts of NEOS um, for example the uh, media browser module um, that would be really nice to, to have that um, done with React. And if you would ask me about an overall vision for NEOS, um, I think the direction it goes to is to make NEOS um, a very user-friendly um, base system where we can attach all kinds of external third-party services and integrate them in a way on a code basis, and but also from the user interface, that is absolutely seamless to the user. So I think instead of creating all the functionality ourselves, um, we rather concentrate on finding um, good external services which you might want to use, and then combine them. So that could also be internal services we haven't combined yet. So imagine. Uh, we want to go further into the direction of content flows. Um, that means you're thinking about, you plan what content you want to write, uh, you create a draft, you want to discuss that, um, you start a first draft of, of an article, want to put that to some for someone to review, and so on. Technically, a lot of these things are already possible, but you have to wire them yourself and the uh, the task of communication is not solved in NEOS, right? So there's no communication between editors. But these are the things I think we should we should concentrate on. See, what do we have there? How can we put that into a nice user interface which helps you with these kinds of tasks and, um, and then integrates with, let's say, uh, your calendar for, for planning your, your publishings and, and things like that. And of course, for these third-party services, another topic we discussed a lot and which becomes more important now is uh, the external services uh, integration with uh, GraphQL. I think it's more or less consensus in the team now that GraphQL is, is the standard we'd like to use um, for accessing all kinds of content and um, data in NEOS. And that is also why we're currently considering um, for example, the, the package Bastian created um, uh, with GraphQL support to promote that to a NEOS package and, and see how we can attach that, especially to the new content repository. Yeah. That's kind of what goes up in our minds. You see that it's not completely in order. It doesn't follow a huge master plan and so on, but that's kind of what happens in people's minds, I guess. <laughs> um, that's of anyway. That that's what we are busy with. And another thing we are busy with is the Neos Foundation. <laughs> Tobias, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Good morning. Thank you very much, Robert. Um, who of you knows that? the NEOS Foundation exists. Okay, that's not bad. Um, who of you knows what it does? Okay, 
a few people. That's that's nice. Um, because we haven't communicated a lot about it, right? Um, I stood on this stage one year ago, um, and I told you we're almost there. We've almost founded it, and we did in May last year, as Robert showed the uh, the document. We did actually incorporate uh, the Neos Foundation CIC, and since then we focused on NEOS actually. Uh, we haven't done much. And for me, that really is a good thing because we're not focusing on setting up a bureaucratic organization that manages a budget that's really not that big and trying to influence the development of a product which really is a community thing. So um, we've not put a lot of effort and focus into the foundation. That needs to change because a company that has been founded obviously needs to be run and you know needs to file documents and stuff like that so we need to set up a minimum and that's actually what i will focus on in the next time um to set up operations um we need to really make sure that the neos foundation can work as the company that it's meant to be by the NEOS team, by the active team members. The active team members run the foundation. They are the members. Um, it's supposed to, you know, um, host the funds that we have available to have the to own the brand, um, the NEOS brand, and to support the project. To be a nice player in the background, to be a legal entity that we all can rely on. We know it's there. It's not that that NEOS depends on a, an agency or two agencies or three agencies or something. Um, we have our own legal entity that we can refer to. That's um, what we will focus on in the coming month. And the biggest project that we have for that is to migrate our funding platform. Um, we're currently hosting that as Sandstorm, as our agency, and that's really a situation I'm not so comfortable with because I'm, you know, there's a, a bank account that we set up and there's some money and it's not ours and it's, you know, yours, it's for the project and I, why do I have it? I don't know, because we said, okay, bef a project needs some funds to operate, okay, so yes, we're doing that, but I would really, I would be really happy if we can give that away this year. Um, so we first need to make sure, you know, we have bookkeeping set up, so really the essentials, um, then migrate the funding, make that you know, a more robust system that's maintained by the team um, to be an official NEOS Foundation CIC system. Okay, so that's, you know, we want to go the awesome way. Um, this will be a project, it will probably take, you know, un until the end of the year. The, the legal stuff is actually more complicated um, to be allowed to take credit card transactions and stuff like that. Um, the idea is to make it even simpler than it is today. There, th there's, you know, a lot we learned with the current setup. Um, some, ho hopefully, some of you have already gone to neosfunding.sandstorm.be and seen, you know, you can buy badges. Like last year, um, when we did the React UI funding, and that's really, really helpful when the community steps in and helps us uh, push Neos forward in a in a really big way. Um, without that support, things would be slower. And that was an, a really important message um, that we sent out last year when we did the React UI crowdfunding. Um, when we asked for your most second most important thing, the first most important thing you have is time, <laughs> and the other is money, of course, um, it wasn't so that we can get something started, um, but so that we could finish something. And that was really important to us, and it was even more important to us, as Robert said, to keep our commitment to deliver by the end of the year, and we are really, really happy that we we managed that. And that you know, a big shout out to the team for for making the React UI a reality. Thank you very much. <laughs> so when we're talking about funding, um, one thing is of course one-time support, like being a sponsor at a conference, um, supporting our lunch or, you know, sponsoring some pizza at a sprint, um, hosting a sprint even, organizing an event and, you know, giving small amounts um, 
to to help the project you know exist really um what really 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 helps us uh from the from the team to plan is of course uh you know steady steady donations that come in we have the long time supporter badges um where um i'm really glad that we have um sponsors that have signed up to give us regular support um and we're not talking about huge amounts of money right um 200 euros a month uh, for for mid-sized agency is, is, is not a huge amount um but it really really helps us um you know to tackle projects and a project could be something like let's build a nicer conference website for next year and you know we need to focus on that and the thing is the community the team the core team and the people that attend sprints of you know we only have a limited amount of time so we focus try to focus and prioritize our time and when we have to think about developing neos features fixing bugs pushing out releases doing some marketing setting up a conference preparing our talks and everything um, some things will not make it on that list and something like a nicer conference website is something you can very easily outsource if you can provide some funding for that so um, my request to you is please look inside of you talk to your colleagues consider joining the ranks of awesome sponsors who are already providing some support for the neos project um, to help us accelerate the pace at which we can develop and bring this great product forward thank you very much robert thanks steve um no. <laughs> okay, so me again. Um, and uh, just just to add on that, uh, I think when 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 you see uh, freelancers and so on joining all kinds of sprints and investing a whole week of time, uh, and then also paying their travel expenses themselves, that that's that can be pretty hard for them. So that is actually one of the things we we try to tackle with the money from the Neos Foundation. Right, um, Sven already mentioned it, and I mentioned I I wondered if it gets boring, and probably it's like, you know, food. <laughs> Will food get so boring that you stop eating? Or I think purpose um, is something so important to us that we mentioned it again and again, and I did so last year with these diagrams where illustrated uh, what makes it a whole person. Yeah. Um, what consists um, th that there's a model called the whole person model. And the idea is that if you neglect one part too much, uh, there can be such an imbalance that, um, that you're likely not, not very happy. And there are ways how you can nurture each aspect of such a whole person. So, um, and you might identify for yourself uh, what helps you um, nurturing that specific part of you. Um, there are, for me personally, three big reasons why I'm still part of this project. I'm also considering like what I did before with Type 3 and and uh, I mean that's kind of 20 years or something almost. I, I don't know. But what makes you stay so long? And that is for me, um, first thing, is the community and culture, the inspiration I can get, um, the discussions, the networking, so all the human communication and, and spirit I can get from that. That's the first reason. Then there's um, the technical challenge, the things I can contribute um, to something bigger, to leave a legacy, th these things, right, which go so deeply into purpose because I don't just create a website which is probably never launched or which is removed in a year from now and so on. So I was longing to, to do something more complex and also song, some, something more lasting. And realistically, um, I'm also still here because I can make a living from it. 
um, NEOS is actually a pretty good thing to do to earn some money with um, because you can consult people um, or can provide consulting for people and um, NEOS is a really nice product to be proud of and to to kind of sell. So that's very unsurprising probably these three things but what's important to know is if this part here uh, would uh, be removed so I would not be able to make a living from it I would very likely still stay in this project um, I guess I won't be able to to um, put in so much uh, time and energy because I need to concentrate on my job but still there are these interesting things there's um, still the technical challenge which I probably don't find elsewhere and there are still all these nice people um, however, if, if that technical challenge also is, is gone and I don't identify with it on, on a professional level anymore, then it's more likely that I um, will reduce my work even more. But I might stay in touch with a lot of people and attend uh, one or few or uh, two events because that's what, what really mattered to me. However, if you turn it around, you have all three and the first thing is gone. If the culture is gone and you have only assholes, <laughs> there's no reason to even try to earn money with it and there's no reason to, to seek the technical challenge. And that is the reason why we, why we think it's so important to look at the first part of, of the culture, right? Even if, if there's no code output from that, that is something we really, really find important, the whole NEOS team. And during the last retrospective, um, as usual, when Gina reads us our rights, <laughs> uh, she also uh, and explains us the Vegas rule and so on, there's also the prime directive, which must be read by someone <laughs> loud. Uh, regardless of what we discuss, uh, discover, we understand and truly believe that everyone did the best job they could, given what they know at the time, their skills and abilities, the reasons available at the situation at hand. And what Gina said this time is, this really works with this team. This is really reality in, in this team and beyond this team. And that that's not the case in all kinds of communities. And another thing which we also discovered, which works beautifully, which we work very hard on, is um, you might be active in the project, you might become inactive in the project, and we try to not kind of um, suppress that this happens, but we tackled it, we looked at it and thought, uh, thought about what does that mean? Someone doesn't have enough time anymore to contribute, so how do we handle that? Um, and therefore we, we established a procedure and a culture of how do you step back gracefully from, from the team? Uh, how do you say, you know what, it looks like I'm going to be inactive for the next uh, couple of months um, and, and I better say you on beforehand so hereby I declare myself as inactive and then he's technically like out of the team, can always come back, is always welcome to come back but step back from the team and what happened now that this happened a few times we kind of celebrate this we don't celebrate, of course, that, that someone is going away, but we celebrate that uh, someone has the courage to stand up and say, yeah, you know, I think I, I realized I won't have enough time. And we had a few cases now where after time they came back and, and it was just perfect that they took their time off and didn't have that pressure. So that was the perfect part. Um, so what can you expect now in the near future? Uh, a new wallpaper.
Yeah, took us a year to develop. <laughs> it's all made with CSS. <laughs> um, yeah, so NEOS 4.0 is going to be released uh, very soon. And so what we focused on there is, um, as, as you know, uh, the React UI was uh, kind of optional, uh, could be installed for NEOS 3.3, and now we made it so that from now on uh, the React UI is um, there by default. We um, uh, made it a lot more robust and developed further features for it. So that's the big thing. Um, it also requires PHP 7.1. So if you just persuaded your hosting company to uh, migrate from 5.6 to 7.0, you have another discussion to lead. <laughs> um, and it will have some nice new asset management features, which I'm going to talk about tomorrow. Um, yeah, and the next sprint will be in Dresden, um, hosted by Sandstorm. I think it's 25th to 29th uh, of June. And as I said, if you have any diverse people in your company, send them. It's a lot of fun and we'll make sh extra sure to, to help them out and yeah, make Neos better. So last word, um, if you didn't realize that and also by the way how we tackle the Neos Foundation, Neos is not a, a software producing company. Right? So there are not people producing software and you download it and be happy and wait for, you know. I of course, there are people who say, well, you talked about that event source content repository for a while now. When, when can I download it? Uh, of course. But that's not how it works. B because the big deal of open source is not um, that it's free. It's also even not the community. I mean, you can do lots of other things which don't in involve code where you have can, can have a community, right? Um, but the cool thing and the benef benefit of open source is that you can participate. Users can participate and shape the product. They have influence. And if you don't take that influence um, seriously, you will use uh, lose it. It's like with democracy. If you're not going to vote, bad things can happen. So we are there to keep an overall vision for you and to make sh uh, sure that things are have a certain quality and so on. But we are definitely looking at you to participate with your own packages, with sending people and so on to help us to fill these little spaces um, between the big chunks of vision we try to throw into that. So have a very nice conference. <laughs>